I went from this to this in just 90 days, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. So I had this goal this year of getting into the best shape of my life by my 40th birthday. And I've been working out since I was 15 years old, but I wanted to see what was really possible if we dialed in the workouts and dialed in the diet. Also, there's this video of me with my shirt off that has like 25 million views across social media, and I was like, I'd really like to have a different image replace that shirtless image for people. On top of that, my daughter was gonna be born right around the time of my 40th birthday, and I wanted to redefine what it meant to have a dad bod. So we will get into all the nitty gritty details about workout plan and diet plan here, but just know that I started at 202 pounds, ended at 177, so that's 25 pounds over 90 days, and I did this with the help of world-renowned nutritionist and fitness coach, AJ Sims. This is the guy who's trained wrestlers like Bobby Lashley, L.A. Knight, yeah, EC3, Johnny Gargano, Apollo Crews, and he's the guy who got Tommaso Ciampa looking sliced and diced recently. And by the way, yes, I did this all completely naturally, although I appreciate the comments from people that are saying I'm on PEDs or that I'm doing testosterone replacement therapy, TRT. That, that is honestly the nicest possible compliment that you could give me, a backhanded compliment, but that is honestly the nicest thing you could say to think that this isn't natural to be able to do this in 90 days. So let's dive into this with AJ Sims and the transformation of how I got into the best shape of my life at 40 years old in just 90 days. Well, I have to start off by saying thank you because this started out for me as just an idea of wanting to get into the best shape of my life by the age of 40. AJ, here we are. We did it. Hey, man, you did it, brother. You put the work in, man. You did exactly what you said you were going to do in 90 days. We were able to get you in the best shape of your life. And that is a lot due to your consistency and work ethic, man. I appreciate the kind words. I couldn't have done this without your guidance. So let's get into the nitty gritty because I've got so many messages and comments yeah. from people going, man, how did you do it? What did your meal plan work uh, look like? What did your workout plan look like? So let's start with diet. I was shocked at how much I was eating. Yeah, so that's a huge misconception that the general public has that when they think of diet, they think of the most boring foods for some reason and very little of it. Now, really, at the end of the day, it's all about calories in, calories out. Specifically, what is your energy output uh, according to what your body's burning on a daily basis? So naturally, what I try to do is set you up when you came to me, you were on a, a quote unquote bulking phase. So you were eating a pretty good surplus of calories, which was great because it was a, a, it allowed me to come in, kind of tweak the diet to, to what I like to do and then customize it after the first two to three weeks based off what your, your body's responding. And then we implemented the cardio and then my products with absolute subs D with a fat-free hardcore. And then we were just basically calorie cycling throughout the entire process. So if you remember, there were some days you had your baseline training day menu, your off day training day menu, and then we worked into refeed days where you're eating, you know, one time I think it was in and out burger and Rice Krispies and cereal. And, uh, and you actually looked even tighter about one to two days after that, which is essentially the entire goal. We're feeding the metabolism while we're pushing your energy output a little bit more. And what you learned throughout the process was the more steps you were getting in, yeah. which is called NEAT, non-exercisal uh, aerobic thermogenesis, basically moving the body and just walking outside, which is great for everybody. There's so many benefits to doing that. Uh, just getting sunlight, moving the body in between meals, digestion, insulin sensitivity. And again, just moving the body is just fantastic. But you learn the more you did, the, the, the quicker you were dropping. And I think we started having big drop-offs after you were doing about 12 to 15,000 steps a day. I believe that's where we got yeah, exactly. And and by the way, for anybody who has an iPhone, I, I don't know if maybe the Google phones do it too, but it tracks your steps. So I was shocked on some days. I'm like, man, I did like 16,000 steps. I don't even feel like I really even did that much. Yeah, so yeah. Six meals a day. We were starting out with eggs and egg whites in the morning with some Ezekiel bread 
kind of talk me through just some of the other ingredients that we had on the, uh, we'll call it the menu that we yeah. did for 90 days. Yeah. So basically the goal is to always hit macronutrients and everybody pretty much knows what that is, protein, fats, and carbs, if you don't, but also your micronutrients, making sure we have enough fiber and soluble, soluble fiber, micronutrients from the fruits, greens, powders, or green, deep green vegetables. So we want to be able to feed the body the proper nutrients to fuel it, not only for your training recovery, but also fuel it for digestion, fuel for sleep optimization. And there's a lot of things that I had in there, supplementation, uh, natural supplements, again, the absolute supplements, aiding gut health, fat burning effects, but you were also doing a cold plunge on a daily basis, which is going to do so many benefits uh, for you, not only neurologically, but also induce uh, sleep optimization and also increase brown fat, which is the good fat that you want. It's the fat that keeps you warm. And the white fat is the fat that you don't want. That's what we were getting rid of uh, throughout the process. So the more brown fat stimulation you have, the quicker the white fat gets burned off. So again, it was all the things that you were doing as a whole, communicating with me, doing the diet. And the diet, basically what I try to do is figure out okay, what works best for Chris? What, what does he digest the best? What does he feel the best on? And I think we started in the mornings, uh, I believe with a cream of rice, and then we switched over to the Ezekiel bread because I think you enjoyed that better. And that's what I try to tell people is when we figure out what's working for you, macronutrient-wise, the amounts you're eating, let's find out what foods you actually enjoy so that you can adhere to the diet. I mean, if you look forward to every morning, you know, berries and Ezekiel bread with some eggs, that's a great breakfast, man. You know, you're getting that yeah. flour spread from the Ezekiel. And then there's a lot of hacks that I don't even think we got into. You can learn how to make that into French toast with the egg whites, um, which is a great recipe. So, you know, those things are very simplistic. You know, if we had your lean meats in there, your chicken, your 99% turkey, um, some fish or shrimp, some jasmine rice. And basically just figuring out how much you needed, when you needed it, and then just going along with the process and then getting those refeed days in where we're just hitting a surplus of calories, where I think the biggest refeed we gave you was, man, maybe 4,500 to 5,000 calories. Because I think I gave you a crumble cookie too one time. That, that was the nicest treat during this. Like, <laughs> did it, is this a typo? I can eat a crumble cookie? So yeah, you're saying... On the high end, about 4,500 calories on those refeed days. What was on the low end? And also, let's say like on an average day, how many calories? Yeah, so I think your baseline days at the lowest point, so your normal training days, were maybe at the lowest, about 21, 2,200. And then your your rest days were maybe about 18 to, to 1,850, which is, at the, and that was at the end. You know, you yeah. never want to start a diet off going 100 miles an hour. It's a slow, yeah. tedious process, and you have to learn how to, basically slowly climb it down and then being able to feed it back up. So it's one of those processes where, you know, we push really hard and we pump the brakes and we push really hard and we pump the brakes. So at my very heaviest, I weighed in at 202 and at the end I was 177. So quick math there, 25 pounds. So this was a pound and a half to two pounds over the course of those 13 weeks, over the course of those 90 days. So I want people to understand that this was a slow and steady process and Absolutely. consistency was the, the key through all of this. A hundred percent. That goes for anybody with any type of fitness goals. You have to be consistent, whether it's just starting to go outside and walk. Like we said, you know, set a goal, 7,000 steps a day has been shown to reduce all cause mortality by I think over 70%. So just getting 7,000 steps and then working your way up, set a goal for 10,000 steps and then set a goal to go to the gym twice a week and then set a goal to go four times and then start fasted cardio. And once you get into this routine of building your fitness and then when you start seeing results, man, the motivation from just seeing your body change week to week or every month, it's incredible. And it, and it keeps you grounded in life to be able to do in every aspect of your life, you're a new father. So congratulations, by the way, beautiful Thank baby you. girl, one week old today. And uh, now you're able to take that discipline that you had in those 90 days and do it across the board. I mean, we already know you're a hard worker. Look at the, the, uh, the, the audience you've built up, the success you've had in what you do. And you were just able to implement that into your fitness. You told me on our phone call, I want to get in the best shape of my life by 40. And I said, let's churn, buddy. It's time to do it. 
you took it on and you did it a hundred percent, man. And, uh, and that's the key is when you go in, you gotta be all in. Yeah. I think discipline was the main word that kept coming back to me over the 90 days, because yeah. it's not difficult to eat those meals and it's not difficult to work out, but it's difficult to always do this yes. when there's, you know, candy or popcorn or mm -hmm. chips, or maybe it just feels better to just sit on the couch. It's the discipline of actually making yourself go out and want to do this. You know, I tell people all the time that discipline trumps motivation. There's always going to be days, no matter if you're a pro athlete, I don't care who you are. I train some of the top best Olympian bodybuilders in the world to the top, your top favorite WWE to AEW superstar. They're human. And there's days that you're not going to want to do it. You're not going to, you don't feel like training. You don't feel like waking up at four or five in the morning and doing your cardio, but that discipline has to override that motivation. And when you do that, you build what's called resiliency and it trickles into every aspect of your life. And again, when you start seeing those results, man, it's just, it's something that you can't really describe unless you've actually been through that process, such as yourself. So I started seeing these results and towards the end, I started posting some photos and I was shocked, AJ, at how many people accused me of being on PEDs or how many people <laughs> accused me of being on TRT, testosterone sure. replacement therapy. Like amazing compliment, right? Yeah. But like also it's amazing for me to think that people don't think that this is possible to do this kind of transition or this transformation naturally. Yeah, I think it comes, you know, from a lot of self-doubt from individuals and not to put anybody out there, but I think when, when they see somebody do something incredible, like what you did in 90 days, the the mentality that the majority of people have will go straight to well there has to be some sort of cheating involved in it there's no way that he just stayed disciplined for those 90 days 100 percent adherency i mean i remember you even going to wrestlemania and you were texting me what can i eat and i said send me the menu because yeah, you yeah. Have food there and uh you know i said here this is what you can eat man and, it, and that's what it takes to reach your fitness goals and i can tell you guys that if Chris can do it at his young, ripe age of 40, new father, husband, super busy businessman, you can do it too. It just takes adherency, compliance, and just working hard. And it was also like, it was preparation too. And I, I know that meal prep is a term that gets thrown around a lot, but it was also like preparing for my day. So if I was flying to Las Vegas, for example, I'd be like, okay, well, how many hours am I going to be there before I can... Uh, eat and I would plan all my meals. And that mm. was something that I think a lot of people, I think flying is a perfect example of that. They'll yeah. get to the airport and go, well, what can I eat here? And they'll just, mm. you know, indulge and have whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. This is something that I deal with uh, the, the wrestlers specifically with their travel schedule, uh, whether it be just they're on the road doing house shows or they have a big pay-per-view or maybe they're going to the UK for a European tour it's all about preparation. I mean, even to the point where uh, uh, one of my guys went to the, uh, a few of them actually to Saudi Arabia, they were there. Yep. For a while. And the food is different there. So, and on the flights from America over there, you can't bring any food with you. So we had to plan that we had to plan that and again, it's all about planning to prepare and, and, and being proactive rather than reactive. Because if you go out and you're on some, you know, a diet or a fitness plan, and you didn't bring anything with you and you're really hungry, your chances are you're going to stop somewhere and get something you probably shouldn't. But if you've prepared and you planned, then you can adhere to your program and continue to seek those results. So let's talk about the workout. We've talked a lot about cardio. I was doing fasted cardio in the morning, walking on a treadmill or just walking outside. What was the actual workout plan that you had me on? So I think what we had you on was more of a higher volume, high frequency intensifier uh, type training where we're not focused on so much what's called progressive overload, where you see guys go in and they're just super, super heavy training, you know, where you're going to risk an injury doing three or four repetitions. I'm more of the believer of what's called time under tension, putting the muscle under as much tension as possible under a specific period of time with a specific type of weight. So you're getting a lot of stimulation, but you're also avoiding, uh, you know, tearing something or hurting yourself or your joints and your ligaments and your tendons. Remember, this is a lifestyle. We're trying to go for longevity. We want to be doing this at 70, 75, you know, God willing at 80, we're just 
still churning and looking great, you know? So the type of training you did was more of a higher volume, higher frequency, you know, where you were in the gym five, six times a week. And, um, but, you know, it's just incredible that you're, the way your body's shaped up, you know, and I was looking at it, I was like, man, you know, I know he doesn't have time for this, but I can put this guy on stage in a men's physique show because you have that natural shape of a bigger chest, wider shoulders, great midsection. And uh, if I would see something that maybe lagged a little bit during the process, you know, I'll throw and do this movement or maybe throw in this body part extra throughout the week. And again, it's all about building a program for an individual customized on what their body needs and when it needs it. But yeah, the training, more frequency, more volume, and you really keep yourself away from getting injured. It's the same thing I do with all the wrestlers, all the boys know my style of training. And I try to take them away from doing super, super heavy stuff because we know if they tear something in the gym, they're out of work. They're out of the yeah. ring. That's the last thing they want. So, you know, one of uh, one of the guys I've, I've been working with recently, Bobby Lashley, is, and he's a beast in the gym. I mean, the dude is just an absolute animal, genetic anomaly. But when I sent him my style of training, he really enjoyed it because it was a different feel to the muscle as opposed to, again, the super heavy progressive overload. So I was doing a, about one body part a day. So I had a back day, I had chest yep. and shoulders. I did just quads. I had arms and I had um, hamstrings. That's we call that a bro split. <laughs> the bro split. <laughs> I'd never, I'd actually never yeah. split my legs up before. That was uh, really interesting for me. Yeah, because again, you know, your legs is such a large body part that doing them both together is really not optimal. If you're going to want to attack your quads to the full extent of using all your energy, there's no way you can realistically go to your hamstrings. So I always like people to split those up because they're just such large body parts, smaller body parts like your shoulders and arms and chest. That's where people will implement that push pull legs protocol, which is very popular. Yeah. And that's, that's great. And a lot of people see great results from it, but I I'm again, I'm more of the old school mentality. I came from, you know, training with Jay Cutler, four time Mr. Olympia when I was a teenager and adapting that higher volume, higher frequency, um, you know, really taxing the muscle, but not taxing those joints and those tendons and those ligaments to where you're just aching and you're hurting and, you know, training is more of a chore. So let's get into some of the, you know, a lot, my audience will know a lot of the wrestlers that you've worked with. So let's get yeah. into some of these guys you've worked with. Bobby Lashley, you mentioned, Johnny Gargano, yeah. Tommaso Ciampa, Moose, Apollo Crews, Drake Maverick. Who else am I uh, forgetting here? Um, let's see, man. Eliester uh, in AEW, uh, EC3. Um, Buddy, Buddy Matthews. I don't know if he goes by that anymore. <laughs> um, man, there's a long laundry list of guys I've actually worked with. Uh, LA Knight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Exactly, right? Just, a, a, man, a lot of guys. I, I, I should have written it all down because it's a long list. I remember getting, uh, we call him Spud, Drake Maverick, but yeah. he was texting me uh backstage at raw and he's like dude you literally work with the almost the entire locker room everybody's talking about cereal right now and uh i was like that's great man if that's what i brought into the industry that that's awesome man so yeah no it's it's great i love you know i grew up a wrestling fan a lot of people don't know this but the reason i got into bodybuilding is because i wanted to be in in wwe eventually one day oh wow those were just not in the cards for me um and funny, uh, I took a couple bumps the uh, like a year or two ago for the first time in a ring. Never did it before. Ran the ropes. And I was like, man, I got a newfound respect for you guys. The first bump I ever took, that knocked the wind out of me so hard. And then wow. running the ropes, you know, on the lats, I had nice marks, red marks on there for a couple of days. And uh, I was like, man, this is some cardio. I got blown up pretty good. <laughs> So I think that if there's somebody watching this who, who wants to take this fitness journey themselves, but goes, man, AJ, six meals a day, all that cardio, all that working yeah. out, I don't do anything right now. What are some steps they can start to take right now to start to see some results? I think the biggest thing is it starts with the mind, right? Everything starts with making a decision in life and everything that we do. You change your mind, you change your life, you know? So you have to make that decision and it doesn't take time. It's an instantaneous decision that I'm going to do something no matter how uncomfortable it is. It's kind of like 
you have a cold plunge. So you understand your mind will tell you the first 10, 15 seconds, get out of this thing. You're dying. But if you know, you what's even shut- worse about the cold plunge is the, <laughs> when you're getting ready to do it, your yeah. mind has every excuse why you shouldn't oh. get in there. Oh, yeah. oh, we could do this later. Or, yeah. Oh, you know, let's wait till it's warmer. Exactly. I always tell my wife, there's two types of people in the world. There's ones that run to that cold plunge. They'll do it no matter what their mind says. And there's people that are like, yeah, maybe tomorrow or maybe next week. Right. Um, so it's that's just, that's just in life. There's two types of people that are right. like, let's do this thing right now. Or, yeah. and I, I love this quote. I just interviewed Arnold recently and I told him how much I love this quote. It's you get results or excuses. You don't have both. And it's like, love yes, it, it. like that is exactly. so true. hundred percent. I mean, he's, the prime example of a guy that came over to America and he had that mentality of a work ethic that started with fitness and started with bodybuilding. And then I, I, you know, listened to a few things where when he tried to get into Hollywood, people made fun of him, you know, and it, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset that I'm going to do it no matter what. So if you're starting a fitness goal, you're starting, don't even look at it as a diet. It's a lifestyle. You want to look good, feel good, sleep good, digest your all your food well. You just want to feel good because people get so used to feeling suboptimal that they think that's normal. And then when they actually start feeling optimal, they're like, man, this is living. This is life. So you get started. You just get started by the mind and then you start moving the body. And one of the, everything eventually will follow. Preparation. One of the biggest misconceptions throughout this whole thing is, oh man, it must be nice to have the kind of money to eat healthy. And I, I'm just blown away by this because most of my meals were ground turkey, ground beef, rice, sure. Ezekiel bread, eggs. Like most of my meals came in at, I'd say two, two to $4. That's it. Yeah. It's actually a lot cheaper to eat this way than to go to Starbucks every day and get your, <laughs> uh, you know, 1000 calorie drink with the foam on top. Right. So, you know, you, ha- again, it's a mindset thing. There's a lot of misconception and misinformation out there. And people kind of get set into that. There's no way I could afford to do that. I can't eat healthy. I can't join a gym. There's gyms out there that are $9 a month now. Yeah. Uh, they've made it pretty much affordable for everybody. So it's changing your mind and it'll change your life, guys. So just be encouraged to get the body moving. You've seen Chris's transformation and you say well, yeah, he, was, he already was in shape. Yeah, he was already in great shape but he took it to the next level. He did work that he's probably never done before. And you can yeah. always look back on those photos and you know exactly what you did. And if you ever want to do it again, you know what, you know what it takes, you know what yeah. it takes. And the cool thing is, is you got your wife watching you and you have your daughter who's going to be watching you now. You have that mentality, that beast mentality, you know, when you need to turn it up, man. And, and, and you don't you you don't even make excuses and you're a busy guy you're traveling all over the place putting out content left and right but you still get it done it's because you changed your mind i remember interviewing mario lopez years ago when he came out with one of his cookbooks and i said look mario you're a busy guy you're on the go and he said something that i'll never forget he goes well chris we're all busy we're all busy it's just a matter of what are you going to do with the time that you have in your day? And that changed my, my whole perception yeah. of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say that people make time for the things that are important to them. So if you can carve out 30 minutes to an hour every day, kind of maybe turn the TV off for that time and just say, I'm going to dedicate this to myself and my body. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing what happens in every aspect of your life when you start really taking care of your internal health. And then of course, externally it shows. And then up here it changes everything. And I truly believe it changes you as a better husband, father, friend, businessman, coworker, son, whatever the case is, it all starts with that. And then again, changing your mind, make time for the things that are important to you. And fitness and health should be at the very top because we can have all the money in the world. We can have all the material, but if we don't have our health, then it's just worthless. I love that quote that it's the the healthy man has a thousand problems and the sick man has one. That's health as well. Look at that, man. I'm going to be writing these quotes down left and right. (laughs) I got so many quotes. (laughs) What do you think is something that people need to stop eating or stop doing that could really start to make a big change in their life right now? Yeah, I think some of the biggest uh, red flags in the diet, especially I'm going to speak on American diet would be your refined sugars and seed oils. So if you noticed on your program, I only put 
extra virgin coconut oil and avocado oil spray yeah. specifically to, to stay away from inflammatory seed oils. So a lot of refined sugars and a lot of seed oils are going to be very detrimental to your health. Um, and it's kind of the opposite, like, you know, salt is good. So we, we've been told that salt is bad, but so if you know, I put a lot of salt on your plan and, you know, we had to kind of change it a little bit, but keeping you well hydrated is absolutely key on the cellular level, which is what good salt, Redmond salt will do. Um, but staying away from all those very saturated fats, those very heavy, dense, fast food, refined sugars, and then people will say, well, you gave them crumble and in and out burger. Well, that was part of a refeed. So once in a while, you can introduce those foods. But on a daily basis, you want to try to stick to your lean meats, your lean proteins, your easily digestible carbohydrates, healthy dietary fats, good organic frozen berries, hitting your micronutrients and making sure that everything you're taking in, your body's saying, thank you. I appreciate it. And you'll know it because your energy is going to be good. Your sleep is going to be good. And uh, up here is going to be better too. I'm going to add one more thing on top of this. If you could just cut out soda, pop, whatever you want to call it, wherever you live, it and is. juice, that makes such a massive change. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Because if you're drinking calories, that amount of calories, and, and again, it's like, or like going to a coffee shop and instead of getting a black coffee, you're getting a coffee that has a thousand calories. Or if you're drinking soda, you have to understand that it's never going to satiate you. So you're always going to be more hungry and you're just going to continue to go to that. But it's also going to induce more cravings and, and it, it, it'll make your body and your mind crave more dopamine from fats and sugars. And it's just this cycle. So once you cut that out, then things just continue to, it happens really fast, man. When I get a lot of lifestyle people that will come to me and they're, they drink that on the regular. Yeah. Uh, when we cut that out, man, these people will lose eight to 10 pounds like that yeah. really fast because their cal caloric intake is so high just from those things that they don't even know. I knew that this was possible because when you look at your resume and everybody who's watching this, go check out AJ on Instagram. He's at Cement Factory. The transformations you've done from lifestyle average people like me to you know guys who are stepping on the Mr. Olympia stage, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable. So you, I am very much of the mentality if somebody else is doing the thing that I want to do, that just means yeah. it's possible for me to do it too. So let's reverse yeah. engineer this back and yeah. figure out how we can make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the, the cool thing about what we did, not only did we get to meet each other and, and form a relationship, I was able to help you build this physique. Uh, the cool thing is, is you have information now that you can take for the rest of your life and yeah. implement it to be successful in reaching those fitness goals. Because once you figure out what works best for your body, man, that is like the million dollar question everybody asks is what do I need to do? Um, and again, we're talking to an audience who may just be getting started on this. So we don't want to overwhelm people. You certainly don't have to have a coach, but just get the body moving. But you have this information. And, and I tell all the boys, uh, all the wrestlers, the same thing. You can now go do this. You have it. You know what to do. So just adhere to the program. It's the biggest key is being compliant and consistent and always being proactive rather than reactive and just staying on course. We can all stay in shape year round, look great, feel great, and uh, continue to eat, you know, cereal when we need to and, 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 and all the refeed days and not kill ourselves, right? Because a lot of the guys, they, they love the keto and the low carb diets, but they figure out, hey, I can actually eat a lot of food and still get in great shape and feel good. Yeah. We mentioned some of the supplements, but let's actually list, list some of them off that people sure. might want to be using uh, mm -hmm. if they want to get in this kind of shape. Yeah. So off the top of my head, I know when we implemented, uh, when we picked up your program, we implemented fat-free hardcore, which is a fat burner that I formulated myself through Absolute Subs MD. I'm a co-owner of that company and I do all the formulations. We had gut health supplements. I think we started your morning off with gut optimization for your internal health because when you wake up, you're in a dehydra dehydrated state. So the first thing you want is hydration on the cellular level, with water, with salt, uh, a gut health supplement, aloe juice. You want to set your internal environment so that when you actually go eat, your food's being processed. So we had all that implemented into the first phase, into the fat burners. We had essential amino acids. We had glutamine, which is great for gut health and recovery too creatine monohydrate and uh we kept it pretty pretty basic man yeah that's pretty much it 
Chris yeah. was only using the things that he needed. He's not using some crazy supplement down at Weeder Farms that we picked for him and, you know, or, or whatever the case is. We, we figured out all he needs is just to be consistent. And, and these are the supplements that he needs. They're working great. The fat free was making you sweat for four to five hours and uh, it was burning and melting that fat off. But again, there's no magic pill when it comes to supplements. That's a big thing I want to get across to people. Yeah. Don't go waste a bunch of money on supplements and think that's going to be the, the silver bullet for, for your body changing. What you got to do is nutrition first, training, cardio, and the supplements will come after that. It's just the cherry on top. Look, I feel so good. It was, you know, the goal was to be in the best shape of my life by mm -hmm. my 40th birthday. I just feel the best. Yeah. And so much of this is because of you and your guidance. So I appreciate it, Chris. AJ. Thank you. And we end every conversation with gratitude. That's a big part of my life. I wake up every day, say out loud three things I'm grateful for. I do it before I go to sleep too. So AJ, what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? I'm, I'm definitely grateful for my family, first and foremost, my beautiful wife, my almost two-year-old daughter who's taking a nap right down the hallway. You know how that's going to be. So, You're grateful uh, for that nap, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for you, Chris. I'm grateful for the fact that you allowed me to come on this podcast, speak to your audience, kind of show face of uh, what I've been doing, not only in the wrestling industry, but also for you uh, to answer some of the questions that, that people may have had. And I'm just grateful that I'm able to get out and move my body, that there's people that didn't wake up today. There's people that are laying in a hospital bed that would give anything to have two good working legs just to get up and get moving. And, and uh, the fact that I get to do that, I got to do that today. I'm yeah. extremely grateful and I will not take that for granted. Love it. Thank you so much, brother. My pleasure, man. Thank you, Chris.